Hey everybody, we are still here at the IMF headquarters and I want to introduce you to my new friend actually. His name is Navid Hanif, Assistant Secretary General for Economic Development at the United Nations. We promise to cut through the kind of jargon that you normally hear at these kinds of big multilateral gatherings and give you some really honest answers about a major issue that's being talked about this week, which is sovereign debt. You know, when I hear a statistic like three-fifths of the lowest income countries in the world are debt distressed and in danger of default. That sounds really bad. <laughs> Can you explain what that means and how we got here? Debt distress, let me unpack it for you. First, let's go back by five to ten years. The easy monetary policy and lower interest rates, people borrowed and sometimes borrowed uh, way beyond what they could handle. But I might also mention we witnessed unprecedented shocks. COVID, climate shocks, and then the war in Ukraine, which led to high inflation. So all of these factors have come together to make debt unsustainable for many of these countries. What does that mean? They are being asked to service their debt, which are payments which are due quarterly or biannually. And their revenues, some countries as I has 25% of the revenue is going to debt service. So when you have to choose between remain, between being sol uh, solvent, what do you do? You make your debt payment. So what do you cut? Your support to poor, social protection disappears. Your budget for education is cut down. Your budget for health is cut down. As a result, people suffer. So then if you combine it with the shocks coming out of this war in Ukraine, what are we witnessing? Poverty has gone up, hunger is up, and what else is really very striking, you know, UN has a human development index where we measure humans' well-being. First time in the last 31 years, it has gone down in the last three years. Every year it has been going down first time. So what do we do with debt? We have to find a solution. It's people's lives. They are suffering. The UN Secretary General has proposed SDG stimulus. Three parts to it. It's called Sustainable Development Goals Stimulus. First and foremost, address the debt distress. And we have very specific proposals. You need to give them either stand still on debt servicing or suspend debt servicing and sit down with them and do debt restructuring. We're not talking about straight write-offs. We are talking about terms and conditions which make the debt sustainable over the longer term. So the sustainable development goals, these 17 goals that track all kinds of human development from poverty and hunger to education, jobs. About a year and a half ago, I think, was the first time I heard the Secretary General say they're on life support. Are you telling me they're dead? We are asking you to rescue the SDGs. Secretary General has issued a call, we should rescue the SDGs. I won't say they're dead. And I also must clarify, it also includes climate change and institutions and good governance. So if you don't achieve the SDGs, our global agreement on people, prosperity and planet, saving the planet, is in jeopardy. So the future of humanity is in jeopardy if we do not achieve the sustainable development goals, which includes climate change. I think the goal of this, of this meeting this week and all of the multilateral gatherings that I've been at th through the past year have been very big picture. Let's talk about climate financing. Let's talk about global cooperation. And people come in and say, inflation, food prices, jobs, you know, there are entire nations that are struggling with the burden of that. So how do you keep people focused on the big picture goals like climate financing if they're coming in and saying, I can't service my debt? Climate financing cannot be separated from development. First and foremost, climate is about adaptation also. If a country is hit by floods or hurricanes, what do they need? They need immediate help to 
come back on their feet, both in terms of their livelihoods and their dwellings. So this is what climate change adaptation is all about. So what we are telling people and those decision makers, if you do not address challenges which are hitting people every day, they will not be able to rebound. You mentioned to me that how do you make it sustainable when you restructure it. If you put debt on a longer term trajectory on lower interest rate, it becomes sustainable for most of these countries. So the second call in the SDG stimulus is, which is right here, which is happening here, multilateral development banks, including the World, World Bank, should change its operations, leverage its resources, and at least lend $500 billion a year, again, affordable long term. I'm not asking for free money. Affordable long term loans to deal with climate crisis, also to fight poverty, hunger, educate their children, because education determines your economic growth in the end. Human resources are the wealth of nations. So we are talking about gender equality. Girls, women should go to schools and colleges. And there have obviously been a number of deep setbacks there in several countries. Afghanistan is one, but I, there are others. I do want to ask just quickly, so China, I've heard a lot of concern, not just here, but obviously, you know, in general, about how China approaches sovereign debt in a more bilateral way. And my question is, how do you coerce them to come to the table and have a more unified approach to these things so that it doesn't become a bipolar approach to debt? UN has always advocated for multilateral solutions to debt problems, but in an inclusive and equitable fashion. Donors and creditors, uh, lenders and creditors should all sit together and find solutions. So that's UN's call from the very beginning. China has engaged in the common framework within the G20. Common framework is a commendable initiative, but it's not sufficient. So what we have been saying, improve common framework, and also includes middle-income countries who are also suffering from debt distress. China's engagement in the common framework is welcome, but China also understands the need to do more. And this applies to all lenders. Let me say two things on that. It should not be too little too late because we are heading towards a decade of divergence in sustainable development. The financial divide will eventually become a development divide, which is not good for this world, this kind of deep division. On debt, the sense of urgency is missing. G20's steps are meaningful, but they are not fast enough, not inclusive, not sufficient to deal with this mounting debt burden. So speed and scale are both missing. We've heard a lot of doom and gloom this week, right? And rightly so. Has anything come out of these meetings that gives you hope that there could actually be more cooperation? First, hope they are all recognizing the problem. They may not be acting fast enough in the scale I mentioned, but all of them acknowledge there's a problem where the World Bank operates, there's a problem where the IMF is standing, and they're all doing whatever is feasible, doable, but they need to do much more, some structural changes. Second, what gives me hope, anyone who decides to fight climate change alone will not be considered wise and sane. If you don't come together to fight climate change, you are risking your own future. There is no solution that one country can offer. Lastly, I want to also end on a happy note. For the first time in 2022, the investment going into renewable energy is $1.1 trillion higher than going to fossil fuels. Also, 21, 2022, look at the people who have been coming into using internet. Every hour, 40,000 additional users were coming in to use the internet. So we have this silver lining also to these very disturbing stories we are getting about poverty, hunger, children suffering that we witness in countries who are in debt distress and who are trying to meet the competing demands on the fiscal resources. Our call is help should come immediately in massive scale, but we are not talking about charity. Changing the business model, moving the private investment where it is needed with the public sector's help to ensure that countries who do not attract private investment will get it. Naveed Hanif, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.